to our second class on negotiation. This is unit two, which is going to focus on setting goals, goal setting. We talked about this a little bit earlier in unit one. Now we're going to go into the detail. In fact, each unit of this class will go into the detail of that structure we talked about last time. So let's go ahead and look at unit two, which is going to focus on the goals. Let's just quickly do a little review here of our unit today. So during a negotiation, most people have a general idea of what they want, right? This is pretty easy to understand. I want to get a higher pay at my job, maybe, for example. Or I want to get a lower price for the product I'm buying. Maybe I want to get higher quality. Maybe I want to get a faster delivery, faster shipping time. Or maybe I just want to get a higher profit. That's pretty normal in business. We just want to get a higher profit margin. We want to make more money. Or we want to somehow make money by saving money on our expenses. So these are all pretty straightforward, I think. A good negotiator, however, needs to have very specific goals. These goals of more profit, um, spending less, uh, faster shipping, quality, these are what I would call general goals. Everybody thinks of that. That's easy. You're not going to get any advantage over your negotiate, uh, negotiation team, the other opposite team. You're not going to win anything. You're not going to be at all any smarter or doing anything smarter by having those general goals. Everybody's got those. Uh, that's not going to be very helpful. Plus later in another unit we'll see that if your goals are general rather than specific and the other side is general also rather than specific, how can you come to a good conclusion when everybody just wants more profit? It's hard to find a solution that is universally going to make everyone more profit. It's really the specifics that matter. So today we're going to go into a lot of those kinds of specifics. Now rather than a general goal of a pay raise, for example, at your job, I want to get more money. That's general. But if I said I want to get 20% increase on my pay, that would be more specific. This 20% is measurable. We can use a metric to measure it. So a negotiator can then plan or your team, which is very normal, can make a plan. And by planning that, you'll be able to execute better. And the most important point is by having a specific goal like 20%, you'll be able to measure it. We talked a little bit about this last week, the importance of measurement in order to create uh, a goal that you then can judge did I make it or not make it and how much did I miss it by so where do I need to change my approach change my tactics or my strategies okay we're gonna jump into a little example here again remember these examples are helping us to see the most commonly used vocabulary and words to get us into the context and to give us a little simple example to understand the situation. So we're going to look at uh, somebody getting ready for a meeting beforehand. And so here we have Fred and Jane and Fred and Jane are going to be getting ready or planning for a meeting. This is a key to plan beforehand. If you don't plan, you're not going to be very successful. So let's take a look at the, how Fred and Jane approach this. Fred says, I'm going to ask my boss for a raise tomorrow. Okay, so there we go. Pretty common. I think everybody wants a raise. I'd like a raise too. How much are you going to ask for, Jane inquires. So here we begin. What's your goal? Fred says, well, the more the better. And Jane responds by pointing out, if you want to be persuasive, you need to have an exact amount in mind and then convince your boss you are worth that amount. Right, there's a really key point. So here, right here, this, this sentence here from Jane is the key point of what we're looking at today. 
If you want to be persuasive, you're going to have to have a number and attach a value to that number. Fred says, okay, I won't give in until I have at least a 15% increase in my compensation. I'll convince my boss I'm worth it by emphasizing the work I did last month on that job, I made a big profit for our company. So Fred changes his direction a little bit by saying, I've got a specific goal, 15%, and I'm going to value that based on last month's project. So here we attach a, a, a value. We can judge our success or failure by that value. And we also can convince our boss, hey, that value is a good value for you too. You can give me this, I get my value, you get your value. So it's all about that valuation concept, which I like that idea a lot. Okay, let's go on here. So let's jump over to a meeting now. So we've got an actual meeting going on. And here we see Fred is going to actually uh, talk with Bill to prepare for uh, another negotiation. Fred says, we cannot assume the Xeno products we purchase will be successful in the market. Bill says, our marketing department predicts strong demand for this product. The implication is that Xeno will try to ask for a higher supply price. So here we have Fred and Bill they're planning for a negotiation. This is before the negotiation, not, not after the negotiation, not during the negotiation. This is before the negotiation, the key point. And what is it they're talking about? They're talking about the company they're going to bargain with, they're going to negotiation with. And what is that company's name? Zeno. And what's the key point they're coming to? They're trying to figure out what's the value. What's the value? We want to buy a product from Zeno company. How much should we pay? How much should we give in to what their demands are and how much should we demand? Well, this depends, doesn't it? If we buy the product from Zeno and we try to sell it in the market and it does not sell well, then we should pay less, shouldn't we? We should take less risk, right? If the product we buy from Zeno sells very well and we make profit on that, increases our sales volume, then we should be willing to pay more and we should be willing maybe to take more risk up front because we have more payoff in the back end. So here we really need to plan ahead and that's what they're doing. Fred says forecasts are not always reliable. We don't want to pay too high and sell low. Bill says this is going to be a tough negotiation. And Fred says, before the negotiation, we need to be clear on what our goals are. And Bill says, any price over 120 USD, we will have to reject. So here we come into a very clear goal. And I think that's the goal of this class, is to learn about those goals. Uh, 120 USD is our goal. Okay, let's continue on with this uh, talk here. Fred says, that is our upper limit. I understand, but we also need to emphasize production cannot be delayed. So we've got kind of a main idea here, 120 is the price, USD. And we also need to talk about the timing of the delivery or the production cannot be too late. What is the latest date we can accept, Bill asked. What is our latest date for that delivery? And Fred says, we cannot postpone Christmas sales because Christmas is a fixed date. It's a very big retailing time. So if we want to get the product into the market in time for Christmas, we're going to have to take delivery earlier than that. And supplies, Fred says, must be delivered at least two months before Christmas season, at least two months before Christmas season. Bill says, give me an exact date. So here I really like this. We're making the goals clearer and clearer, trying to be more and more specific, less and less general. And Fred says, 
We need to take delivery of the goods before September 1st. So now we're very specific. Bill says we should consider stressing a price of 100 USD. If Zeno threatens to withdraw, we can suggest they guarantee delivery in time in return for a price of 110. Now remember, the goal was 120. Now we're going to go lower on the price, 100. Why? Because then we can give up a little bit. What will we give up? Give up $10, up to 110, and that way pressure Zeno to make sure we get delivery on time. Fred says, they may accept that if we are persuasive about our ability to increase their sales with the implication we would cooperate with them in the future. So if we can convince them, persuasive, they may do that, but we also maybe have to guarantee future purchases, a future relationship so that they feel we'll sell more for them, right? This is where things get interesting. It's never the case that a business works totally on its own. If I'm buying from Zeno, they want to sell to me. They want me to succeed to sell more. If I sell more, I make more, they make more. So in this way, we create a relationship. But it's not just that simple because they don't know that I'll sell more. It's a risk for them. I don't know that their product will sell well. It's a risk for me. So everyone is carefully measuring their risk and they're trying to get the biggest payoff up front. And that's really what uh, Fred and Bill here are talking about. They're trying to see how can we minimize our risk, maximize our payoff up front, and maybe create a long-term payoff. Bill says, of course, but we must test their lowest price. We must test their lowest price, try to get the lowest. Let's put off the delivery issue and first deal with the price issue. After we test their price, we can submit the delivery proposal. Okay, so now we've gotten very specific. What are our price targets? 120, we wanna start out at one. We're willing to jump up to 110, and that way we can pressure for the uh, delivery time, for the production time. However, which one should come first? Which one could, should come second? First should be price. Let's talk about price first. If we talk about price, we can test how w willing are they to go down on that price. Then we get a feeling for that, we can bring up the delivery. So maybe we can push on price. If we get the low price, if we get 100, hey, great, that's good for us. Our target was 120, maybe we get 110. If they're very hard to push to 100, they resist, then maybe we are willing to pay more because remember our target's 120, but we can give up something like 10 more dollars and then get back on the delivery, use the delivery. So we don't want to give everything up front. We want to step by step, give up a little bit and test a little bit. So where do we begin? We're going to begin by testing on their price. Fred says, that all sounds good, but we need a fallback plan. I like that idea of a fallback plan. So what we've done here is we've gotten our targets, we've gotten our order. Now we need to say, hey, what happens if things don't go right? What do we do? And Bill says, yeah, I've seen Zeno people negotiate before and they are tough. So here's a really key point. Who is your counterpart in the negotiation? Who are you negotiating with? Who's on the other side? If you know something about them, if you have some experience, or you can talk to someone with some experience, this may help you to understand. This will help you to get ready for the negotiation beforehand. And Bill says he's seen the Zeno company negotiators, and they can be very tough, meaning they hold on, they don't give up any, any uh, dollars easily, they don't give up any, any concessions easily. And Fred says the Z uh, Zeno negotiators are often uh, renegotiate points that were already settled. That's a strategy. We're going to learn about this strategy later, but this strategy of renegotiating means up front they may say, yeah, yeah, okay, we agree. But then later they say, you know, we don't want to do that. We're going to have to change. So maybe at the beginning they say, yeah, we'll give you 110. But then later they say, ah, 110, we can't give you 110. I talked to my boss, he refuses. So this is renegotiate. So this makes it hard because when you try to test their price they say yes but then later they say no that's a kind of strategy in this case 
We just call it renegotiating. Bill says, tomorrow we will have a meeting with all the people on the negotiation team. At that time, we can brainstorm and come up with a good fallback plan. So in this case, we've got a really good example here. Two examples. One example is very simple and straightforward. And that example is, I want to negotiate for a raise. How do you begin? Target. What's your next step? Value. How is this raise related to the value you get? So I can convince you what you're paying me is a good value for you. Good for you, and of course good for me, but equally good for everybody. You're getting something. That's my goal. Whether or not it's true is a totally different matter. We're not talking about what's true. We're not talking about what's right or wrong. We're just talking about how to get the other side to give the concessions you need, which in this case was pay, very simple. The next example is a little bit more complicated, but very common, getting ready for a business negotiation. And in this case, it may be complicated. It involves prices, products, shipping, quality. How do you get ready beforehand? Set your goals clearly. Let's look at some of the vocabulary related to this topic. And again, it's not that this is hard, but I want you to get familiar with the business terminology most often used in these kinds of situations. So of course, accept. Will the other side accept your proposal to approve? Assume. Assume means that you automatically take for granted or think that or say that it's okay even though it's not okay. That it's true even though it may not be true. So you may assume that our price, our lowest price is 110. Something like this. Brainstorming. Brainstorming is really important for your team, your negotiation team, to go ahead and try to find ideas, be open, especially coming up with strategies and tactics that are creative to help you kind of get an edge on the other side. Compensation, which is another business word for uh, pay. What's your pay level? Uh, consider, think about, right? We often use this word in negotiation. Please consider this, please consider that, please consider my position. Convince, it's our goal to convince the other side that our position is true and we're not, we're not trying to deceive them. We want to convince them. Cooperate, of course, we often talk about cooperation in business and in negotiation. We'll talk a lot more about it later in another unit, but we always want to make it look like we're cooperating even though both sides of the negotiation have different goals. We want to give both sides the feeling that we're cooperating, even though it may not be cooperation as you think about it in that I give up half, you give up half. That's not the same idea. Delay. We often emphasize delivery times and production times and a delay means things get put off. It could also be a negotiation has a delay, meaning you put the time back. Later that we're going to learn about the tactic of using delays to your advantage. Emphasize is one point or one part of the negotiation that you want to say is really important. I want to emphasize this is our bottom line. This is our lowest price. Fallback. A fallback is a plan, a price, a strategy, maybe a tactic, maybe a shipping date, maybe a delivery time. It's just something that's like a backup. Our delivery time goal is October 1. Our fallback time is October 15, meaning if October 1 doesn't work, then we can go for October 15, but we would prefer not to. A forecast is a prediction. Usually we use forecasting in business to try to predict the market demand maybe even supply, things like this. In this case, we're going to buy from Zeno and sell the product in the market, so we need a forecast. Will this product sell well? Give in means to give something up to the other side. So will you give in or we will not give in? Uh, we should not give in. We need to plan exactly at what price we will give in. Goal, of course, is the thing we're trying to get. 
this is our desired outcome. You may have more than one goal, of course. You may have many goals, and we're going to learn about something called a goal package in just a moment. Implication. Implication means something that is likely to happen from doing something else. So the implication is we will have a good relationship. Or I want to give you a lower price now as long as you promise to buy more in the future. And that buy more in the future is an implication. We can't be sure, but we kind of imply that that's true. Persuasive means you can convince the other side. So you must have a persuasive argument to convince the other side. Postpone is like delay, but postpone usually means you purposely, on purpose, change the date to be a later date. Maybe you postpone the negotiation. That means put it off to a later date. Predict. Predict meaning to guess what happens in the future. It's like a forecast, and very similar to forecast. Only forecast usually has a business implication, whereas predict means you're usually trying to guess something, how it will happen in the future, prediction. Put off is the same as uh, postpone. You delay your time. Reject, meaning I reject your offer, I refuse it. And this is very normal negotiation English where we'll just say, we reject that, or my company rejects that, or my boss rejects that. Renegotiate, I've already talked about, to negotiate something you already kind of agreed to, but now you go back and talk about it again. Stress, meaning emphasize. I must stress that our lowest price is $100. Stress, emphasize. Submit, means you give an offer or you put something out to the other side. I submit this proposal to you. I submit this uh, lower price to you. Suggest, meaning you have some ideas that you want to give to your team or to the other side. Usually you'll use this when you're negotiating and you don't want to make a commitment so you'll say something like, I suggest that today we focus on the price and tomorrow we focus on the shipping. Test, here test me doesn't mean exam test, here test means to probe the other side to see if the other side is uh, resistant to your uh, desired goal. So I will test them, meaning I will give them a price or I'll give them a delivery date and I want to see how they react. Maybe my delivery date is October 1, but I may ask them, can you deliver by, and I may say September 15, and they'll say, whoa, September 15 is way too early, then I know. Well, October 1 may not be so easy for them. I test it first. I don't use the real information, but I test it. Threaten. Threaten means to give the other side some kind of pressure. Now, in negotiation, what kind of pressure can you give the other side? Usually, the pressure you give them is you're going to quit. You're going to withdraw. Let's think about the example with getting a raise from your boss. If you're trying to get a raise from your boss, then I think, uh, what's, what can you threaten? Well, you can threaten, I'm going to leave, right? Uh, I'm going to quit. And negotiation from business to business, B2B is very similar. My threat is I'm going to leave the negotiation. There's not really a lot of other threats you can do. Uh, that's really the big one that's often used. Of course, you can threaten things like we're going to cut your supplies, we're going to buy less from you in the future. You can threaten many things, but they're all kind of related to the same thing. We're not going to work with you, or we're not going to work with you um, in a cooperative way in the future. Withdrawal, of course, is the result. If you withdraw, then it's game over. Negotiation ends. That's quitting the negotiation, just like quitting your job. You just leave. Okay, let's look at some uh, follow-ups here. And I think we can see uh, some of these ideas are very useful. And I'm just going to flush them out a little bit. Goal setting starts out with individual goals. How do you do goal setting? You don't do it by just having one big goal, such as low price. 
Of course, low price is what everybody wants, but you need specific goals. So how do you do it? Individual goals. You try to get as small and specific as you can. These can be single goals or many single goals together. These goals need to be very clear. The more clear they are, the better. The clearer they are, the better they are. They need to be measurable. The more measurable, the better. A student who wants to buy a new cell phone, for example, let's use this example. Let's say this, stu this student, of course, wants to save money because they're a student. They don't want to spend a lot of money. Uh, another student may want to get something like the most up-to-date features. They're not really worried about money as much as they're worried about having the feature set. Uh, but in most people's cases, they're a combination of these. And I would like to save some money and I'd like to get the most up-to-date features, right? Uh, that's something we learn in consumer behavior. It's really hard to ask consumers what they want because if you give them a choice, would you like to have a low price phone and all the features? Of course, everyone will say, yeah, I want the lowest price with the most features. Nobody will say, I want the least features with the highest price. And very few people say, I want the highest price with the most features, right? They want the lowest price with the most they can get. Of course, uh, in negotiation, you can't get that. So we need to specify what are our priorities? What are the things we're really trying to get? So let's follow on with this kind of uh, example. So we have a student and the student wants to get a new cell phone. So we begin by setting some clear goals to help this negotiation be successful or at least measure its level of success or failure. We need to measure it. So how do we do that? Okay, let's take the idea of saving money. We begin with, uh, I'm going to want save money. I don't want to spend money. This can be changed to be more specific. In this case, we can make it something like spend less than one month's pay from a part-time job. So this guy here, he has a part-time job. His part-time job, he makes one month how much? He would like to spend less than that one month's pay from his part-time job. So now he's getting very clear to him, to him, subjectively to him, this is the value he's looking for. All right, let's go on. What else can we talk about? This can be made even more clear, starting with exactly how much less, because he did say less than one month's pay. Well, what do you mean less? Do you mean 1% less, 2% less? And here we get very specific. 50% of my part-time job's monthly pay. So take his monthly pay from his part-time job, cut it in half, 50%. That's the m money he wants to pay. That's the price he's looking for. Now then, we can add another goal here. And in this case, the goal, the more, more, more goal is, he wants to get the feature of ability to play MP3 music files. So at the beginning we said, I want to have the most features for the least price. Uh, yeah, okay, everybody wants that. But now we're getting specific. Half of one month's part-time pay from his job and make sure that it plays MP3 music files. This is key. Okay, next. Each goal can be judged for its importance because those are two. We're simplifying it, of course, there may be more goals, but let's just do these two. Now, we've got a price and we've got a feature. Which one is most important? Which one is less important? Which one should we focus on first? 50% of monthly pay may be the upper limit with no possibility of going higher and a price of 30% would be better. So now we're gonna say, okay, look, I'm gonna focus on the price and this price can be divided into sub goals. 50% of my monthly pay, that's my goal. But it would be better if it was 30% of my monthly pay. So of course, this is lower. Of course, it would be great if the phone was free, zero. That would be wonderful, but it's not. So we're looking at his personal subjective. This is not objective. This is not some kind of business analysis. This is this student's personal feeling of what he's willing to pay, what he thinks his value is for a phone like that. 
Okay, now we go on to talk about the MP3. The ability to play an MP3 file is a minimum requirement. He must have this. If the phone does not play MP3, then guess what? He's not going to buy it. So this is a minimum requirement. How much memory do you, does it need to have? Because you need to have memory to have the MP3 file, right? His feeling is this is not so important. Uh, whatever the phone comes with, he can get by. Or maybe he can buy a memory card and put the memory card in so he's not worried about the size. So we've gotten the price and we're very specific. 50% monthly uh, part-time job and better 30%. So we have a kind of layered goal here and feature must be minimum mp3 playing memory more memory is better but it's not a major concern next we're going to set these priorities so let's take a look over at our slides okay if the MP3 playing ability is required, as long as the price is under 50% limit. Next, the MP3 playing ability is required. Yeah, that's exactly what I just said, so I'm not gonna, not gonna repeat that. Lastly, a lower price would be nice. Kind of said that already. Now, if he can find a phone like this, if there's a phone with this feature and it has the lower price, of course, he would meet his goals. If he can find a phone that's under 50% of his pay, he meets his goal. If he finds a phone that's under 30%, his success can be rated as even higher. So now our student has a pretty clear idea of his goals. If it does not play MP3, game over. It doesn't matter how low the price is, he can't buy it. So these things together are what we call the goal package. Now why is the goal package important? because it helps you set your goals. And why do we say package? Because as you just saw, it's a little bit complicated. E even this simple one, I got a little bit confused. This is what you think you need. What you think is the value for what you're getting. This is for you to minimize your risk. This is for you to get what you think is the maximal benefit you're looking for, right? Totally subjective, it's not objective. Two different students may have totally different objectives. Their price range, the feature set they want, totally different. But rarely is it so simple as just price, right? Think of a phone is a good example. So we put these different ideas together, these different goals, and this makes up what we call our goal package. So let's take a look graphically at what a goal package can look like. We begin with individual goals. So we talked about this, 50% of my monthly part-time pay, and I needed to play MP3 files. These are my individual goals. Next, how important are these goals compared to each other? And how important are each of them independently? Can you divide them up into sub-goals? Yes. Price 50% less than my monthly pay is my goal but I really would like 30% would be better. So my highest price I'll pay is 50, but I'm targeting 30. And my MP3 demand, this requirement is a must have. If the phone doesn't have this, no matter how low the price is, 30%, 20%, 10% of my pay, I still won't buy the phone because it must have that. Next, we set up the priorities of these goals. So number one was the price. For this student, maybe for you, Maybe for you it's different. Maybe for me it's different. But for this student here, his goal package, his priorities are just like this. First, 50% on the price. Second, MP3 feature. Third, trying to get a lower price. So what does this, what does this mean? What does this priority list mean? That if he wants shopping, if he wants to the electronics bazaar, and he's looking all over the place. First question is the price. So he's gonna cut down the choice set to be all the phones that are this 50% or lower. Next, he's going to look for in this 50%, how many of these phones 
play mp3 files. Now it's gotten smaller. Next, he's gonna say inside this group, 50% of my part-time job pay and play mp3. How many of these also have a lower price of 30% of my monthly pay? That sub, sub, sub set would be the one he would choose first. Then he would go around and compare those. If there's nothing left in that set, then he'll compare the next set out. If there's nothing in that set, then he'll go to the next set out. So that's why a goal package is really, really helpful. It helps me to keep clear in my mind the things I'm looking for, especially while I'm shopping around. And all of this together, we call the goal package. This is the goal package. So very quickly, one more time, right? Individual goals, this could be two, three, four, five, 10, 20. Then each goal is important. How important is it? How important is it? Each one. Then which one ranks first? Which one ranks second? Which one ranks third? And all of these together are the goal package. So think about it. an easy way to view this is you go shopping. If you're like me, even if you're shopping online, what's one of the hardest things to do is comparing products. You search here, you search there, you search here, you go all around, you walk here, you walk there. Sometimes if I go to a location like an electronics bazaar and I'm walking through there, like in Hong Kong or Taiwan or China, and they have all these options and all these choices, I get tired out very quickly. I just saw that phone over there, but I forget what its price was. Then I saw this phone and I'm not sure which one's really better. As you begin to learn more about different phones and see their different functions and features, you get more and more confused. And in the end, you get frustrated and you say, okay, just buy this one. And usually when you get home, you're a little bit dissatisfied. Why did I get this one? I should have got the other one. So in negotiation, this is a really well understood problem. How do we overcome this problem? By making the goal package clear from the beginning. Then when you go shopping, then when you compare, you simply say, these options fit, these options fit, these options fit. And when the salesperson says something like, this screen has a 1080p resolution, you say, hmm, that's interesting, but you know what? In my goal package, 1080p resolution is not one of my individual goals. Therefore, this does not really matter. The key question is, does it fit this price range? Does it fit this feature that I'm looking for? If it does, I will consider it. Then later, if I have three phones and all three phones match my goal package, then I can begin to look at other things or talk to the salespeople to see. Maybe I wanna create a relationship with that store. Maybe out of these three phones, one of them is a friend of a friend of a friend. I'd like to give, it, give my money to him because then somehow I can get a relationship or maybe next time get a better deal or something, something else, right? So all of these things are possible a little bit later. First, we need our goal package. So our goal package is totally subjective, but it helps us when we then go negotiating to be much more objective about what do we need rather than, well, whatever, whatever, and getting tired out, which is what always happens to me. So the goal package is made up of specific goals dealing with issues of price, things like price, of course, very basic, size, that could be product size, lot size, design, contracts, packaging, service packaging. What's the service package we get? Not packaging, service package. What do you give us in terms of service? Because it may not be a physical product or maybe a physical product and a service product combined. After sale support, after we buy this hardware, what kind of support do we have? Shipping issues, quality issues and many, many other issues. Of course, the things we often think about are price, uh, timing, shipping, design, but there are many others. Now, on top of this, there may be other goals that are less specific than things like price or uh, lot size or uh, after, uh, after sales service. Those can be very spe specific. If the product breaks, we we'll replace it within a year, a warranty, something like this, a manufacturer's warranty. That's very clear. But there are other goals that we call intangible goals. 
Intangible goals are goals that are not so clear. They're not written down so clearly. You can't really see them. You can't measure them so easily. And yet, they can be very important to the negotiation because they can play an important role. They can also be part of our package, our goal package, the things that we want. So they are not easy to measure, but still could be very important. Let's take a look here at intangibles. If we look at this figure here, we can see at the middle of the figure are the goal package. Okay, we just talked about goal package, right? What's inside the goal package? Price, size, design, contract, service, after sale support, shipping, quality. These things are all fairly measurable. These are all pretty black and white and clear. However, if we look on the outside of this picture, what we see are things like relationship, reputation, getting a deal. Just get a deal means I finish the deal, I, make a, I close the deal, I make a deal. Future negotiations, competition, that is other companies in the market, competition. So if we look at some of these are very easy to understand. Relationship. What does relationship mean? If I buy from you now, maybe we can develop a relationship and in the future you can give me a better price. If I help you now, can you help me later? Or vice versa. If you help me, then maybe I'll help you in the future. Or maybe we have a previous relationship. My company has bought from you before, so I trust you, so I'll buy from you again, even though you may not have everything price, size, design that the other company has. There may be some things you don't have, but still, I think relationship is important. Reputation. I trust you. I know your reputation and or you trust me. Getting a deal. Now this one's actually very interesting. I find getting a deal very interesting. What does this mean? Well, let's say that my boss told me I need to go negotiate and make a sale. If every time I go to make a sale, I negotiate very tough, I negotiate very hard, and guess what? The other side always withdraws. They always leave, they don't, they don't agree, I make no sale. What's my boss gonna say to me after a while? Hey, you know, you never get a sale. And what do I say? I say, yeah boss, but I work really hard. I'm a tough negotiator. Uh, yeah, you're a tough negotiator, but guess what? You never get a sale. If you never get a sale, you're, you're not making us any money. If you don't make us any money, I'm not sure why we need to have you. So you're fired, <laughs> right? So sometimes just getting a deal is important. If your company is in trouble, even getting a deal that doesn't make profit may be useful just to create cash flow. This is not unusual. Or you may need to get a deal for other reasons. Future, we need to think about the future. If I make a really tough deal now, if I push you on price and I push you on delivery and I make this deal really hard for you, but you need this deal, maybe you need to get a deal. I don't need to get a deal, but I push you, I squeeze you, it's called, and then you agree. What about the future? Will you be happy to negotiate with me in the future? Probably not. So we need to think about in the negotiation, how are we going to make the other side feel in the future? And of course, another one is competition. Maybe there are many buyers and few sellers. If there are many buyers and I'm a buyer, guess what? I would like to go ahead and get a deal as soon as I can. Even though it may not be the best deal, it may not be the exact deal I want, it may not match my goal package exactly, but because there's many other companies trying to get a deal, I'll hurry up and try to get this deal quickly so I can beat my competition to getting the deal. Okay, so this is the goal package. And then outside the goal package are intangibles. So that's kind of the sums up the topic for this class today. Now there are some exercises in your book. If you want to go back and uh, take a look at those, we may cover them if you're actually in my real physical class. If you're not in my physical class, then maybe uh, later we'll take a look at them 
uh, online when I create another online um, exercise. I'm still trying to figure that out, see how that works. Okay, um, if there's any other issues or questions, feel free to email me and uh, good luck with this. Next week we're going to move on to Unit 3. So uh, see you next time in our negotiation.